Isn't the nature around us beautiful? Hearing the birds sing. It's in the clear blue sky. Trees, flowers, the grass, the dogs, the people. Nature is just beautiful. But well, my question is, where did it all come from? Do you believe in the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? I can't believe that. Nothing created everything. They used to believe that this universe was eternal and that was that. And then some very clever men discovered actually the universe is expanding. So if it's expanding, there must have been some time when it first started, when it all began. Well, the Big Bang, if you will. So what started it? What kicked off the Big Bang? Well, whatever it was, had to be outside of the universe. So it was timeless. It was spaceless. It was immeasurable. It was infinite. It was eternal. It was um, immaterial as well. This is where I start on the basis of my faith. And so the next question I have is, well, okay, is this just some sort of force, some sort of energy that made all this happen? How can that be? And I look at the law of biogenesis, which says you can't get life from non-life. I look at these stones and I could stay here all day and look at these stones all year. I could be here for billions of years, but these stones aren't going to get up and start walking. They're not going to have little baby stones that will start chattering away. You can't get life from non-life. Life only comes from life. So the fact that I'm living must mean that I came from something living. They came from something living. It goes right back. Whatever started the universe, whatever started everything else, is living. What's more, we see design in creation through the laws of science through the universe through the smallest atoms the atoms which make up my body and design my eye there's a designer whatever this infinite eternal timeless measureless immaterial being is they're intelligent and they're living finally they must be personal whatever this being is it must be personal because we know how to be personal, we know how to make relationships. This being has made a choice, it's a decision maker. I believe in a life-giving, living, timeless, immaterial, eternal, intelligent, personal, divine being. Now, the only ancient religion that I know of that believes in such a personal, all-knowing, uh, intelligent, um, eternal God is Judaism. And within the Jewish scriptures, they've recorded for us so faithfully how this God has interacted with creation, how he's told us how he wants us to live our lives. And he's also told us that there will be eternal justice too. That's great news, that there'll be eternal justice, because we see so much wrong on this earth, so much wrong throughout the centuries, so many times when people have not been held to account. They seem to have got away with it. Not true. There will be eternal justice. Wonderful news. In fact, God even gave us some simple laws as to how we can live the lives that he wants us to live found in the ten commandments an ethical code a moral law from god himself and it's all preserved for us throughout scripture okay but uh, here's the bad news within that same moral law i find that i've broken it 
time and time and time again. The first law is to put God first always. Well, I haven't done that. The second one, don't make any image or imagination of who you think God might be, that he hasn't said he is. Don't use his name in vain. Keep a day holy, set aside for him, a day of rest. Honour your parents. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't even think about it. Don't steal. Don't lie. And be content with what you've got. I've broken these laws so many times. Actually, it's bad news. If there's eternal justice, and I've broken God's holy law. It's bad news. Bad news for me. And bad news for you. So here's a dilemma. God loves us, but he also loves eternal justice. We've broken God's moral law, and we know it. We don't need to see it written in the scriptures, we've got it in our conscience. We know God's moral law, we know it's wrong to steal, we know it's wrong to lie, we know it's wrong to commit adultery or even think about it. We know all these things. When we meet God on Judgment Day, we're in trouble. But within the same scriptures, Isaiah chapter 53, we're promised that our Saviour would come. Some would come who would take the punishment for our sin, who would pay the penalty for the times when we've broken God's law. Seven hundred years later, Jesus arrived on the scene. God in the flesh, or at least so he claimed to be. But then he healed people, he raised people from the dead, he accepted worship, he claimed to be on a divine uh, level with God the Father himself. And these are the things that got him killed. Now, either he was mad, he was deluded, he thought he was God, but he clearly wasn't. Or he was bad. He was a liar, he was a fraud that got not just himself killed, but so many thousands of others, and it's totally misled the rest of us. Or the only other alternative is Jesus was God in the flesh. Now it's largely because of his miracles, because of the way that um, people were transformed when they came across Jesus, as well as his claims about himself, as well as his ability to forgive sins and to heal people and to raise the dead and all these other things, that I believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. But more than that, he went on to do exactly what the prophecy said a saviour would do. He took the whippings, he took the beatings, he took the nails in his hands as he was crucified. And he said he did it for you and for me. He did it for our sin. He took the punishment. And why? He did it because God loves you. And God loves justice. It was the only way to resolve the dilemma. He loves you so much that he came and died for you and took your punishment upon himself. But if Jesus died, and that's the end of the story, actually, that's the end of our faith too. The claims were that he also raised from the dead three days later as well, just as he promised he would. Now, if he promised to do something and it never occurred, then why would I believe anything else that Jesus said? But I believe he did raise from the dead. Why do I believe that? I believe it because I know about it even today. You see, if Jesus had not raised from the dead, then those first people, those first women, those first disciples, those first hundreds of people who actually saw the resurrected Jesus in the flesh, if he hadn't raised from the dead, they would never have spread the news about him. Because by spreading the news about him, they were killed, they were persecuted, they were tortured. But because they went through that, who would be tortured for something they knew was a lie? So because they witnessed to the fact and were transformed, these lowly people, into bold missionaries, because they seen Jesus, they had the empirical evidence right there. Because of that, I've got to hear about it even today. Because of that, I believe in the resurrected Jesus. What this means for you and for I 
is that not only are we saved from the consequence of our sin, but are also promised eternal life in heaven if our trust is in Jesus.